Uh, Dana, Dana, Sorry, Brendan, you were asking. Uh, was, uh, the yeah, go ahead.
Okay, well, let me take uh, uh, take the uh, phone off of mute here, um, and um, uh, so you've re you've related the four principles of Diné philosophy of education to doing uh, projects. Uh, what other aspects do you think are important? Uh, for uh, uh, the life of a Navajo. Thank you. 
and also your family and your friends. And it's really hard to be separated from everybody. So like people are really missing that that connection that you used to have at the class and stuff. So you learn the time effectively. Like at high off time, at the dawn, get up and go up, um, rejuvenate yourself with fresh air, you know, um, say a prayer for yourself, just to where like you you center yourself in the morning for setting yourself up to for success. And then work all diligently as as much as you can throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, make sure you eat something. People are are getting their schedules like really messed up so sit down. Like you know, if you're allowed to sit with your immediate family, sit down, take to be thankful for what you do, that you're still healthy, that you still have opportunity to learn, and that you do have something to eat. You know, that, you know, maybe, maybe you did something really great, and you take that time to be thankful. And then, at night time, during child finish, you know, it, it's good to reflect to a certain degree, but go to sleep. <laughs> Get your rest. Um, I know some people with these schedules are all over the place. So this is this natural order, this natural time that we have to stay like in the east and the south and the west and the north. That this is follow the natural order and that's the way that's the way we need to be designed and the people should be that you know, do these events and you're 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 gonna find some balance. Harmony and it'll improve the health. Like, this is not just a, a way of, you know, doing a project, but it's also a way of life. And, like, if you look at the uh, elders and how they live their lives, that's what they do. They just think this is just something that's just a natural pattern of how they live. Like, my dad, for example, he gets up every morning and does his prayer. And then he goes out and he goes for a three mile walk. And, you know, he gets his um, resources and his health going. And then he works on his projects, you know, he's not working with horses and plant baking and, you know, taking care of things all day long. Then at the end of the day, he comes home and, you know, we, we share a meal. And then he would sleep by, like, 8 o'clock. I'm not saying it's going to sleep by 8 o'clock, but, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a natural, it's a natural way of life. So there's a little, this outline that the Holy people is meant for health as a human being. It's meant for health. So, um, I know that a lot of my students have been really prepped and stressed out. So, it just takes a little bit of time to thank you and acknowledge the, um, the, the mountain, uh, all of the um, things in the end, but the rest of the prayer that I mentioned line by line, but let's talk about your, your holiness as a human being. On um, one of the five of us, it says, see the open in the episode, that means I am the unfolded Gehazon. So each of the way that your spiritual self is, is formulated is that you have a female side and you have a male side. And the way that these two um, are complementary, uh, are, are, and, and, um, is a, is a, is a, express by more, I don't know, to feel and to experience and to learn and to grow and to have good, but you are the only one that you are. And it's good to remember that you are the child of the universe. So, um, I said, 
life of everything around us. It has um, perfect balance and complementary, and yet it's um, cycular, it's ongoing, and it goes like it, it's never ending. It doesn't ever fade away, and it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't leave you. You are always a holy person, and I, I want you to think of yourself that way. That you carry yourself, you, you are connected with the earth, the sun, and you are connected with the Father Sky at the top of your head. And just you breathing, thinking, experiencing, growing, all of that are holy acts. Like you and your speech. Uh, this, this, that this, this is, um, is like the, the wind or air. And so that is an animating life force. But you just being alive is a wonderful thing in itself. And I think people are forgetting the value of, of life, the value of what it means to be a human being. So this philosophy is meant to carry you onward for all the generations to come. And it's my hope for you and your families that you will always have an that way of life to, that's ongoing uh, forever and ever. Have your language and you have your 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 that philosophical idea of the good way to live. So yeah, it's a um, not just for projects, not just for school, but it's also um, for good living. Um, taking care of your body and your mental health is crucial at this time. Oh, uh, fantastic. Uh, now, one thing that I've noticed is the Diné philosophy is very similar uh, to the philosophy of my religion, which is Taoism. Um, could you uh, explain more about how harmony and balance are important and how they uh, enable us to do everything that we do? Uh, anything negative or 
bad or harmful uh, illness, and all kinds of illnesses, uh, even, even cancer. Uh, we have ceremonies that can, that can remedy those. So when your spiritual self is cleaned, you are then re like reanimated, you are rebuilt. And so when you are rebuilt, you have, you have shoes, you have socks, you have like the spiritual armor that goes to every single part, like an important part of your body. So when you are reanimated, as in the, in the, in the portion that you are being rebuilt, re put together, you become one of the most dangerous forces. Like, um, like this is a ceremony that I've had for myself, and the spiritual armor is incredible. Like, it feels like you're walking and then you're 50 feet tall and all of your steps are shaking the earth like, <laughs> and that's what it feels like and so you are then protected and then you do the restoration and that restores you to harmony and so basically um you you experience a kind of like a spiritual death and then a process of cleansing and reanimation restoration back to harmony. So who's no one just like blessing is the is the goal, like order and perfect order, that's the goal. But we have we have remedies for when things come out of order. So um, things like being out of order like um, this has really like strong implications for um, the field of mental health. You know, people experience trauma or um, some kind of PTSD or all kinds of other um, other other mental illnesses like even depression and insomnia, um, anxiety. So that 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 is disorder, it's disharmony. And so people um, utilize the chuanjin to bring about that restoration. So it's a cycle, it's ongoing process. Never really stagnant, you know. Like you can be at harmony, but then you might fall back into disharmony. So it's part of it's part of ceremony, but it's also part of daily practice. So if you don't get it right today, try again tomorrow. You know that it's it's ongoing, and this is small things. You know, like like saying a prayer for yourself. Like um, Navajo life is a very prayerful life. So we get the prayer and offering of white corn at the dawn when the sun is overhead. You know, you're going to buy your business. When the sun is straight overhead, you can use your corn pollen and you can go and give an offering of gratitude of yellow corn in the, in, the, in the sunset. And then in the north, in the dark time, Toshkish, that's when you can take a glass of water. And what my, my grandfather used to do is. Um, he, like after we all went to bed, he would sit there with a glass of water and he would meditate. And he would pray, he would lose that water and pray. And then after that, he would rejuvenate himself by, by drinking the water. So this prayerful life, it's, um, it's like continuous acts of, of, of creating harmony. Like, Christologist is the manifestation it's something that you have to keep up. Like you can't just go into ceremony and then um, restore yourself and then have like like goodness. You have to it's a daily need and this type of thing. And so that's why the um, these 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 sacred times have all of these activities and thought processes that are associated with it because that that daily maintenance. So it's um, it's very very complex, but you cannot have one without the other. Um, I noticed that the Navajo philosophy agrees with Freud that there are no accidents. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, that's a, a side note. Uh, wouldn't you say, though, uh, in, in Taoism we say that when you have sickness, it's because you've lost your, lost your balance and your harmony. Uh, uh, would that uh, line up with uh, 
the Navajo philosophy? Well, over-emotional, uh, that kind of describes me uh, already, uh, but uh, uh, all right, well, let me open this up and um, uh, let the uh, students ask some questions. Uh, they've been very quiet so far. Uh, Um, you know, the boarding schools really like, did, a, did, a, did a great job of wiping out um, 
our language and our culture. So unfortunately, a lot of the Navajo teachings um, have diminished over the past hundred years or two, two or three. So it's it's um, it's becoming more common for people to to follow um, a Catholic or a Christian um, belief system. Uh, would you uh, say that the Native American church is kind of a combination of these, or is that uh, something different?
Uh, okay, I'll go with that. Um, now, when you talk when you talk about peyote religion, I know that um, this is actually one of the richest regions in the wor in the world for uh, uh, psychedelic and psychoactive plants. Uh, with with the peyote religion, is that um, to invoke a spiritual journey? Uh, um, uh, or it, uh, what, what is the purpose behind that? Uh, Mr. Uh, Badoni uh, made the comment that it helps to cleanse you. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's another thing. Also, it gets rid of uh, all of the, the bad things inside of you. Uh, let's say if uh, the chini was uh, taking over you, like you, it happened to me. When you it come fights out, uh, with it. To you. You. <laughs> it's a little complicated, uh, but you know the fireplace is right there. Hang on a second. Come up here and repeat that to the uh,
Mr. Uh, Bodoni here uh, uh, made some very incisive uh, comments, and I would like for him to repeat those and then have you uh, uh, comment on those. Hello, this is um, Bedoni. Um, I was talking about uh, the aspects of uh, peyote. It just basically cleanses you. Is all. There's no really. Uh, basically, what my grandfather taught me is that uh, it just helps you. It cleanses you, and it helps you connect with the holy people and Mother Earth. And you know, basically, it is a psychological uh, psychedelic drug. It is, but um, it does help you in a way. I was uh, sharing the story about the time that uh, I got possessed by a chimney and uh, what uh, basically what uh, the peyote did and what the fireplace did. And I was explaining that uh, the fireplace is your shaman and asman and it's basically your grandparents. And they're trying to help you. Basically, you can't lie to the fireplace. And basically, uh, for the fireplace knows, even the medicine man knows, he knows. Um, and basically, I was just explaining. Uh, basically, uh, uh, it just helps you. It uh, gets rid of all the bad and evil things inside you. That's why you always get the urge to always throw up. <laughs> That's why you always take it. <laughs> and uh, basically, it brings you uh, to. It gets you holy again. It gets you uh, cleansed. It, it's not like what other people say about. Like they take it just for giggles and laughs, but it's basically just like helpful. It helps you a lot, and um, yeah. So <laughs> that's basically all I wanted to say. Yes, um, thank you for those comments. Yes, um, thank you for those
philosophy, but also to um, to the purity religion. So, but um, there are there are um, subtle differences, but there's always that um, connection with the Creator, like with the moon and the earth and the fire, and using that tobacco, um, you know, using the medicine. All of that is that connection, and that's the part about Navajo philosophy is that. You are always connected. You are never apart from it. It, it is always with you. And so you're supposed to walk like you're a holy person and talk like you're a holy person and conduct yourself as a holy person. Um, and that's it's so important. And um, I really I really hope you know that we can t- continue and carry on these teachings for for more generations. But, yeah. So these are some of the So 
uh, one of our prayers, uh, they pray all all the God together or just the hell? Every religion has like a specific God. Mm. Um, so we, these D and the Nea are called upon for different reasons for different ceremonies, like there are protection way ceremonies, there are enemy way ceremonies, there are blessing way ceremonies, there are um, there are different kinds of hatal, which are, you know, other kinds of songs and chants. And so for the purpose of whatever you're doing, you're gonna call on different day and dine. So the ceremonies are so complex and they last for four to like nine days. So different day and dine are acknowledged with those prayers, and it all has to do with the purpose of what of what what is the what is what are we doing here? Are we doing hajjanjas to bring about um, restoration and health and bring about blessings, or are we doing a protection way? Do we need to um, arm this person spiritually, or are we doing um, an enemy way? Do we need to vanquish an enemy? Like there are day and dine who who possess these characteristics and can act on your behalf for, with your spiritual self. So um, it, <clears throat> there are some regional differences in how ceremonies are conducted, but basically the, the holy people who are invoked are based upon the purpose of the chant or the prayer. And yeah, with over a hundred different ceremonies, there, there, there are so many, it's, it's incredibly complex. People spend their whole lives learning this kind of knowledge. So I'm not even there. I'm I'm still a baby. <laughs> like my, my, my thought process is still growing. So old people, like uh, old elders with old age, great learning, great wisdom, that is very much valued. That kind of knowledge, that experience is, is, is incredibly valuable. So for a person like me, according to Navajo ideas, I'm not even matured yet. They say that you don't mature as a Navajo adult until you've got white hair at your temples. So I'm, I'm still, I'm still young. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Christian, Christianity talks about um, the origin. I mean, uh, the origin of the of uh, the evil, of uh, or maybe sins or those kind of dark. Uh, uh, the spirit of something like that. So, um, what about uh, Navajo? Do they talk? Uh, do they talk about uh, the origin of evil, or maybe the origin of good? Mm -hmm. So, um, the origin of evil comes from the first world, from the black world. Um, those kind of stories we we withhold um, for the winter time because there are some the internet who are dangerous and very powerful, and they call that Bahadzid. So during this time, it's not appropriate to talk about it. So in the winter time, at night time, that is the appropriate time to share those stories. But the origin of evil, even that story itself is unclear, because for my teaching, from what I know, is Khojonjir, which is Blessing Way teachings, but the other side, there are other stories that I haven't even been exposed to, but the origin is said to have come from the black world, and that's the very first one of the underworld. And there are, um, there are characters like the first man and the first woman who are said to have worked together to bring apart the first evil. But that story is pretty vague unless no, like elders won't tell you the story until you're mentally ready for it. Um, if you take in too much information before you're mature enough to process it, it could hurt you. So um, my my uncles and my aunts, they, they make sure that I'm ready for uh, more information. So that part, I'm barely beginning to learn that is, is pretty dark. Um, but yeah, there's a whole body of knowledge about the origin of evil. Fantastic. Uh, does anyone else have a question uh, on uh, the Navajo philosophy, uh, whether related to education or anything else? 
if not, I have one more question, uh, uh, Dana. Uh, how would you relate the Navajo philosophy to the wider Western philosophy of education? Well, the, the easiest way to do that is to overlap and Sihasin to um, the, the scientific method. So you get a hypothesis, which is case your idea, and then you do, um, you get some methods and your procedures, and so then you, that's where you have your, you know, your plan for how you're going to do it, and then you get your, your results, that's where you, you look at whatever data you got, and then see how soon you reflect and you analyze it. You, you either create in, um, new, new information, or you confirm information. Or the whole thing is garbage and you've got to start all over again. <laughs> so that's the easiest way to, to uh, look at the net philosophy of education and the Western ideas of, of education. So, yeah, um, the net philosophy as a method of inquiry, that's the, the easiest way to do it. But um, there, are, there are some other ways that we have uh, explored u utilizing the Hajime Hanet. So the origin stories about um, how the black world, or blue world, yellow world, and the white world, and how the evolution of and development of the earth occurred through these underworlds, and we layer that with the um, the, the the time scale of the development of the universe as we know it. So, 14 billion years ago is when the Big Bang happened, and then before that there was nothing, and so that's when we we mark. The, um, the black world. When there was nothing, there was only mist, gas, and dust. And that's, it, it overlaps. Um, like, so the, the blue world, we have in, in, uh, introduction of um, feathered species. And then in the yellow world, we have introduction of a huge, diverse array of species, like, you know, different kinds of foxes, mountain lions, different bears, chipmunks, rats all kinds of different mammals, large and small. And then in the fourth world, the white when we had a development of beings. So we have we have talked with teachers and asked them to make comparisons of um, you know, the geologic timeline of, you know, development of Earth, um, as as well as the development of Earth according to Navajo philosophy. So that one is a really fun activity. I really enjoy um, talking about that, especially in making comparisons. So, like, Navajo knowledge is not necessarily linear like the timeline, um, but though we, there are some um, striking similarities that are fun to explore. Well, uh, uh, Dana, I really appreciate uh, you're uh, taking time to talk to the class today. Uh, we have pretty much used up our time, and I'm willing to bet my phone battery is about to die here. Uh, uh, but again, I really appreciate your, uh, 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 your tuning in and, and talking to us about this. And... Um, uh, today's quiz, which should be quiz number nine, will be what did you get out of uh, the, uh, this presentation on the Diné philosophy of education? Uh, thank you very much. I'm hanging up now, I swear. Uh, have fun. Talk to you soon. <laughs>